one. Boom. Hi, everybody. Didn't cough. Not once. Not even one lesson. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it is Wednesday night. It's time for a little D&D here on Indigo Chameleon. We are so excited that you can come and join us. Uh, welcome to the Unbroken Veil, New Orleans, a game where magic, myth, and monsters exist within the modern world, but the regular folks must never know about it. Uh, we've got a few announcements before we get started with tonight's game. Hi, Beth. Uh, thank you. Heart hand starting early tonight. It's Wednesday, my Dudes, ah, yep, yeah, uh, welcome, uh, welcome to Chili's, uh, yeah, we've got a few announcements before we get started with tonight's game, we've got a Discord, you can come hang out there and meet cool, cool people, uh, Art Hard Studios, what's up, friendly friends, hello, uh, we also have a merch store, burr, 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 burr. uh, you can get cool, cool stuff from the merch store, like mugs and shirts and all sorts of stuff, you can shower curtains with our good, good buddy, Karma, you can see at the bottom of the screen there, the Indigo Chameleon mascot, uh, our non-binary serpent god so it's pretty cool uh <laughs> upcoming schedule for this week uh tonight is unbroken veil new orleans tomorrow night is a continuation of our one shot uh it was pretty high level to begin with it was a level 16 uh uh and mother of cats was our intrepid dm now mother of cats in her amazing wisdom we had a player that wasn't able to join us this week so she said hey Instead of trying to recast, why don't you all just bump your characters to level 20? So now we're doing a Candlekeep Mysteries where all of our heroes have been bumped to level 20. And oof a doof, gang. This barbarian that I was playing yesterday, the last a couple weeks ago is now a beefy, beefy boy. Um, so, uh, so tune in for that. It's, it's a good, good time. Uh, that's on Thursday. On Sunday, we continue onward with our Strahd Sucks uh, campaign and a reverent romp through Barovia. Uh, the heroes just met the Burgermeister, and after a delicious meal of all sorts of burgers, uh, uh, they are currently chilling in the Burgermeister's mansion, uh, where they will try to solve the mystery of where one of our NPCs, Magnolia's kid, has gotten off to. Uh, so tune in for that. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun time as we celebrate that and Magnolia's birthday. Uh, it's gonna be a good good time so um yeah uh not only do we have cool, cool <laughs> st stuff going on here on the channel mini b hello uh our favorite little b uh not only do we have cool, cool stuff going on, on the channel but you can also check out some of the other cool stuff we do including father patrick uh, uh you, you tend to play games on another channel as well i do every thursday at seven o'clock i play on classy f and gamers we're running a Wild Beyond the Witchlight campaign, so that's where I'll be. Where's your? What's your favorite like drink of choice for that game? Whiskey. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it's short, <laughs> sweet. Oh, you've got it there. Oh, it's oh my. A bottle of Suntory whiskey. It is incredibly dangerous, very smooth, and uh, you know it's the reason that I uh, make so many great decisions in that game and never shut up. <laughs> Uh, so tune in for fun, drunken, uh, whiskey-fueled shenanigans, please. Uh, hey uh, Not only that, but you can check out Wolf Grin. Wolf, uh, so, hang on, Sorry. hang on. I need to establish something. I have always known it as Wolf Grin. Is it, but you say it Wolf Garin. But it's been so ingrained within me because the character, when we played, was I felt like it was Wolf Garin. So is it Wolf Garin or Wolf Garin? It's actually Wolf Garin. Okay. But I'm okay with Wolf Garin and just playing Wolf and uh, works as well. I mean, it's just, it's it, he's <clears throat> such an easygoing guy that you could pretty much call him anything as long as it's not late to dinner, right? All right. Well, uh, Wolf Garin, uh, where can we check out the cool, cool stuff you're doing? I'm swinging my sexy sabers out there on uh, Wolf Garin D&D. &D. And uh, you can check me out pretty much every morning, and I'll be out there. Oldest Beat Saber streamer in the world. The world, the world, the world. Unless you can prove otherwise, having a lot of fun with it. 7.30 in the morning Mountain Time, Monday through Friday, and then we uh, get together for some multiplayer on Saturdays. I'm really looking forward to Sweeps Week, where you have to challenge the senior citizen at the senior rec center that has decided to overtake you as this. <laughs> and you guys just have waiting. like a... I am waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I think that's it for announcements. I think that's it for upcoming stuff that we have going on here on the channel. Uh, unless I, there's something else I forgot. And to go, no. Okay. Uh, heroes. Uh, I'll tell you what. 
uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to do the recap this week. Uh, when last we met, uh, we left our heroes. Our heroes had found themselves in the House of the Rising Sun, uh, a bar um, uh, that was sort of uh, given to them by Martin's grandfather as a place to gather information. Uh, you all went to the House of the Rising Sun and met some pretty interesting characters, uh, not including a small gnome uh, by the name of uh, Felrin Marin, or uh, colloquially known to his friends as Z. Um, uh, Z is running an, an Inventors Expo, and uh, he is going to be doing that in a little town called Eureka, uh, and has said that he would be happy to, to, to bring you with him to the moon for the championships um, should you help him with the Inventors Expo. Not only that, but Becca and Noah struck a deal with Medusa to get VIP cards to the second floor, and were able to uh, meet uh, an imaginary friend who said through the power of imagination, they also could get them to the moon should they participate in the imaginary Grand Prix, uh, a race in some pretty exotic locales uh, using the power of imagination. We're on a bridge, Charlie. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good, good time uh, there. The group has some decisions to make, and they can do that tonight in the rooftop bar located uh, here in the House of the Rising Sun. Um, and uh, <coughs> heroes, you all find yourselves atop this rooftop bar. Uh, standing behind the bar is the enigmatic uh, bartender uh, that has been uh, that would talk to you earlier, Martin, in the night, uh, and it's just sort of leaning against the bar. Uh, it's a much smaller collection of booze. Uh, the entirety of the rooftop bar is this beautiful, lush garden with a giant tree at the very center of it. Uh, Medusa is uh, standing next to Father Patrick and. Um, I believe that's it. Oh, no, uh, there's another individual here at the bar uh, who is standing at the bar. Um, a very large, blonde, Valkyrie-like woman uh, with a shotgun on her back, uh, uh, covered in all sorts of different guns and things of that sort and scars. Um, but she is also gathered at the bar with all of you heroes and adventurers. So, heroes, uh, you... Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, Medusa has invited you here to the <coughs> rooftop bar and um, in no uncertain terms, given you a, a brief time to talk and figure out plans and things of that sort and uh, avail yourself to the drinks that are up here. Uh, there are plenty of quiet alcoves here in the rooftop garden bar and you seem to have the run of the VIP section uh, for the time being until the night gets a little <coughs> bit later in. Imagination versus science. Hey, Length the Wise, good to see you again. So, uh, heroes, what would you like to do? Since I I know the bartender, because I met him earlier, sure, really going to be uh, good buds. Uh, I wanted to ask him more about the house because he was like we were talking about it, and then he did the thing, and I'm just. I'm now I'm intrigued. I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Martin, you uh, you head over towards the bar. Uh, uh, he will kind of slide over to you. Never his elbows never quite leaving the bar top uh, as he just kind of slides over to where you are and he goes, "Hey, pal, good to see you again. What can I get you?" Uh, what, what do you got? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, we've got a few house drinks and stuff like that. Um, uh, I don't know. What are you in the mood for tonight? Are you in the mood to get a little crazy? <laughs> I've never had it, but I heard they're really good. Sure. A Shirley Temple. A Shirley Temple. Uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, I can do that for you. A Shirley Temple with a twist. I don't know what's in it, so I, I'm glad you know how to make I don't know what it is. So just so I'm aware, you've never had a Shirley Temple before? Uh, no. So you don't know what's in it? Nope. Great. I can totally make you that drink. Uh, uh, he grabs a couple of bottles and uh, and just goes about the business of making you a Shirley Temple uh, behind the bar. Uh, Susie raises an eyebrow at this as, as Martin is made a Shirley Temple uh, with a few different bottles that are grabbed at random points uh, from the back uh, and, and things of that sort. As this drink is being made, uh, Heroes, what would you like to do as well as Martin just kind of saddles up to the bar? need to talk about our options like who we talk to and and how we're going to get to the moon i mean does everybody agree with this uh yeah i, think I mean did everybody I talk to other to. people H right. hang on I mean uh medusa puts a hand up and she goes for for clarity's sake could one of you please explain to me why you're going to the moon like the, like the just the 
Give me the basic rundown here so I have a better understanding of this. Oh, yeah, I got this. Oh, I totally, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so, yeah. Um, uh, this guy, uh, Patrick, who may or may not be a priest, uh, he stole the Stanley Cup. He was in jail, and he stole it. It might not be the Stanley Cup, but it's a cup. Anyway, he stole it from jail or ah. before jail. But anyway, he got here. And his dad, and I point over to Noah, his dad is in jail, like holding his place somehow. Maybe he's disguises him. I'm not sure. Anyway, he's holding his place in jail. And then he's got to do something like return the Stanley Cup, I think. Ooh. And then we've got to get back to the moon so that he can trade out with Noah's dad. And then he'll be back in jail. Right, guys? That's what's going on. She got it 100%. <laughs> okay. Uh Cool. Med Medusa looks over at the group and then turns to you, Father Patrick, and uh, says, you're going back. I don't really have a choice. Well, that's... Whether I get to stay here at the expense of an innocent man trying to save a lot of people, or I go back. I mean, you could always stay here. I would if you asked. Uh, she gets would a little... You ask him to break his word? Uh, she turns to you, Noah, and then turns back to Father Patrick. And then she sort of rolls her eyes a bit, and she goes, I think I need a drink. Uh, she turns to the group and says, uh, It's open bar here in the garden. You're welcome to stay as long as you need. Um, you're even welcome to rest here. The weather always stays the same. Uh, you won't have to fear anyone attacking because no one would dare. Um, uh, if you're interested in drinks, just ask Bob and he will be happy to accommodate you. Um, and uh, she gives a, a little wave and uh, the changeling behind the bar just sort of waves to everyone and gives a little like salute. Um, and uh, she goes, I think I'm going to start drinking now, let me know if any of you need any food. Um, and uh, she heads over towards the bar and takes a seat uh, somewhat solemnly, uh, looking back at Father Patrick as she does. About how far away is she? Uh, she is, uh, she's not too far. She's about like 30 feet away from you all. Okay, so you could have a reasonably quiet conversation and not be overheard. Absolutely. Uh, okay. uh, you uh, actually, Exo, do me a favor. Give me either perception or investigation here at the bar. You got it, um, boss. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's do. You said investigation. Yeah. That's a sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, you kind of take a second to get your bearings here at the the rooftop garden, and it's <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Uh, like not only is it, is it beautifully aesthetically pleasing it, it smells amazing with the flowers blooming at night there's hints of honeysuckle and lavender on the air as well um, but the garden itself has all of these hidden hideaways and sort of like alcoves little benches sort of separate um, this would be if you were looking to make a deal or sneak away for a rendezvous or like th th this place is designed perfectly for that sort of thing uh, you can't imagine the number of deals or liaisons or things of that sort that may have taken place here in this particular um, rooftop garden bar. Um, uh, even as you think this to yourself, as it starts to get a little dark out, uh, you see uh, lights coming out of the plants in the surrounding area uh, that begin to just sort of uh, flitter about the space. Uh, they almost look like the dancing lights cantrip until you see that they are actually bugs. Uh, they are actually uh, like a modified firefly that you've never seen before that are just sort of flittering about the space, uh, landing on various plants all throughout the space, somewhat drawn to the activity that's going on. Uh, but there's plenty of space for you to be able to have a conversation. You said firefly, so. I... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, F for respect. Yeah. Um, so I need to ask. Ezra just wants to go order an apple teeny and that's it. Yeah, you go over to the bar. Uh, uh, you see that Bob is pretty busy making a drink for Martin. Uh, that's in, coming in three different layers, three different colors. Uh, there's sparkles in it and things of that sort. And it just seems very in, 
uh, very focused on making this drink for Martin. Uh, as you order an apple teeny, he looks over at you and gives you a little wink uh, and uh, and uh, makes uh, makes the drink for Martin and then uh, slides it over towards Martin. Uh, says, "Wait!" Uh, takes a curly Q straw and uh, places it in the drink, and he goes, "One Shirley Temple, the best I've ever made." Is it visibly obviously not a Shirley Temple? To <laughs> Absolutely. Temple? Anyone who's ever drank yeah. a Shirley Temple before knows that this is not a Shirley Temple. Okay. So, for me, what uh, what kind of, what what's the taste going to be like? Is it going to be... That's a great question. Give me a D100, please. Oh, no. <laughs> <clears throat> Eighty-two. This metaphysical conversation between science and imagination is like, gang, I really want to participate, but I have to lead this. So, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, this, uh, so uh, it kind of moves through. It almost tastes like a, um, a drink that gets sweeter uh, the more you drink it. Uh, it starts off just a little bitter, almost it's got like a whiskey or bourbon uh, taste to it, or like a dry, smoky scotch. And then as you drink a little bit more of it, it gets a little bit sweeter. Um, so on the first sip, yeah, uh, he, Martin will spit it out and say that the Shirley Temple has gone bad. Uh, he goes, no one should drink the Shirley Temple. Oh, no. Damn, bad. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I forgot to stir it. Hang on. Uh, and he takes the straw and he stirs it all up and he goes, give it a sip now. That, that should have fixed the issue. <laughs> takes another sip and <laughs> yeah. it's sweeter? Or it's just... much sweeter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, crisis averted. He just forgot to stir it. <laughs> Everything's good. We're all good here. Perfect. Nothing to see. Move along. Uh, uh, for everybody around the area, Martin doesn't notice, but you all tend to notice that Martin has a five o'clock shadow. Uh, what's every- he's rather baby face to start with, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a five o'clock shadow. Uh, it looks like he just didn't shave this morning, but you're noticing it in the sparkling lights it's funny of the bar. He never shaves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh what's everybody else doing? Uh, Noah's going to want a whiskey and a cigar. That's just kind of how he rolls these days. Sure. Um, Uh-oh. I don't know if that's an option. Who do we lose? Uh, Mike went oh, to go Shirley shave. A bit more. Mike went yeah. to go shave real quick and then <laughs> come back. Yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. Uh, Bob slides uh, slides over a, uh, an apple teeny over towards Exo. As, as Exo, you kind of sit closer to where Medusa is sitting and things of that sort. Uh, Noah, as you request a, uh, a whiskey and a cigar, uh, he uh, Bob looks over at you and gets the big glass down. Uh, like he doesn't give you the regular sort of whiskey glass and sort of brings you over like a, a, just a larger glass he would normally serve whiskey in. Uh, reaches underneath the seat and pulls out... Um, uh, a box uh, uh, of stogies. Uh, the box is inlaid with green on it, uh, and it looks like somebody has written the words property of Oberon and then crossed it out with a marker uh, repeatedly, uh, just drawn over it a bunch of times. Uh, he opens... And it keeps appearing. Oberon keeps showing up? Or No, no, no. It just looks like it... Uh, like just uh, You can just see it barely underneath the ink and, and things of that sort as you... Uh, as you open the box, there's three cigars in there, all uh, all all looking amazing. You know, you can even give them a little the sniff test, and it yeah, smells yeah, like a very fine, does. sweet no, tobacco. Excellent. He uh, takes one and nods his thanks, and needs to ask. Not he's not. I'm not. I'm asking for Noah to the DM. You had mentioned a tree growing in the middle of this garden. I did. How intriguing is this to somebody that might not know the full story of the tree? Uh, it's pretty intriguing. Uh, I think at a certain point, Noah, you would turn back to look at it, and uh, Bob uh, d- pounces. And he goes, uh, uh, he says loud enough for everybody to hear, he goes, the drinks are good, the cigars are better, but the fruit, the fruit is so good. Uh, you're never going to find anything like it. Um, here in the garden of good and evil, that particular fruit that grows on that tree, it has a way of awakening certain aspects of an individual. 
So, uh, please, you're welcome to have it, but, uh, but it's not going to be a taste <clears throat> so much as an emotion, a feeling, a, a different quality that you may not have experienced before. But um, So, you're welcome to try it, but uh, just be aware. There's never anything quite like it for the rest of your life. X is going to glance down at the apple teeny like... <laughs> uh, as you glance down at it he kind of sits down in front of you like this and he goes have you had a sip yet <laughs> she definitely would have had a sip already yes <laughs> yeah how is it teeny good good Yummy. and he looks at a watch that he's wearing and he kind of looks over at you and he goes i'll check back in and uh, goes back behind the bar, uh, just kind of cleaning glasses and things of that sort. Uh, I start licking walls, guys. Just tell me to turn my camera off. <laughs> the snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> Becca, what are you doing? Can I, they can said I we're welcome to have the fruit. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, say that one more time, Becca. Oh. They said we're welcome to have this fruit. They were yes. like, yeah, you can totally have some. Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. I'm heading over to the tree. Patrick, what were you saying? Can I insight check him? Yeah. Oh, that's smart. Absolutely. Already not heading like, to the I tree, don't but care whether smart. or not he's lying. Uh, mm -hmm. That's an adjusted 20. I want to like try to discern some level of his intention. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, give me an insight check. That's an adjusted 20. Adjusted 20. Um... All right, let me roll his deception. You have no idea. Uh, he is very, he is very, he is very, very, very hard to read. Uh, Bob is an enigmatic sort and has been here for as long as Medusa has been here. Um, Bob enjoys the finer things in life. The, the best things in life are free. And Bob believes that in order to get those things, you need a bunch of money to sort of pave the way to get those free things. Um, and so uh, Bob, you know, is just a, enjoys having fun, enjoys setting people up for the level of fun that he's used to. So, uh, so as Bob encourages those to take a bite from the tree, Indigo Chameleon, I need you to take and roll me a D8, please. Ooh. Ooh, let me now, roll is she, cat. One thing that, that Noah would have done at this point with his newfound powers and everything, and knowing that his first two attempts have been mixed results, he is going to do a divine sense at the tree. Okay. And uh, uh, just kind of see if he gets a reading of one type or another. As you do divine sense towards the tree... Um, the tree... And, and with divine sense, divine sense isn't so much a, a, a directional thing. I just, it's something that I sense around me. Okay. Just in a 60-foot six, sphere, but I'll be looking at the tree as I'm doing this. And, the presence uh, of strong evil, uh, divine sense tells you the, the presence of strong evil... Uh, you know the location of any celestial theme. By the hallow spell. Okay. Uh, here's something cool. Uh, you you use your divine sense. You tap into that ability that lets you sense things. And as you do, Father Patrick does not blip. Uh, Father Patrick does not show up on your radar. Does not have that bright light surrounding him and things of that sort. Um, the tree itself registers as fiendish energy. Uh, Zach still glows undead, um, but for the most part, that is, that, that is all you pick up. Uh, Susie, uh, the girl with the shotgun, uh, <laughs> has splatters of, of fiend on her as if you were shining a black light in a hotel room and there was just splatters on the wall and things of that sort. Um, she is just coated in, in fiendish energy, which you imagine has to be the blood from some very high up demons of a certain point that have just not come off of her person. Um, but, uh, but as you cast, that is all you are able to, to find. Uh, hey. 
Becca, you take a big old bite. You reach up, grab one of these fruits from the tree, and as you do, uh, you it, it tastes amazing. Uh, a little bit of the juice from the apple like trickles down your your throat a little bit, and it is the best tasting apple you've ever had in your entire life. And as it happens, uh, Indigo, you are compelled uh, for as long as uh, until I tell you otherwise. Uh, Indigo, you are compelled with the sin of envy. Um, you can let that influence your behaviors in any way that you feel like it would influence Becca. Um, uh, however she would interpret that, however strong you want to make it. Uh, but Mm. envy is now your compulsion, uh, for the time being. All right. Um, uh, by the way, uh, check out the chat because, uh, chef has just gifted you a wild magic surge to use at any point. (laughs) Okay. Um, I can do this. uh, Becca, Becca is, is walking over towards Martin and kind of eyeing his Shirley temple. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm into this. She's going to talk him out of it. Yeah. Uh, Becca, you, you make your way over there. Uh, Zach, what are you doing while everybody's smoking cigars? Can I ask, is there any change in Becca as far as my divine sense? No. Okay. That's important. Noah's kind of split between Father Patrick and the tree right now. Okay. Um, Zach, what are you doing, Bubba? Um, after hearing uh, Bob's story about the tree, he's intrigued, and, and his first thought is, well, what's the worst that could happen? I'm going to die again? He's also going to take a, a fruit from the tree. D8, my dude. Uh, l- yeah, live your life. Make choices. Uh, uh, you head over towards the tree. You grab another one of those apples, and as you do, the tree begins to shake a little bit. You know what I mean? As you go over and grab uh, one of the apples from the tree. And that's a three. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Zach, uh, you feel uh, this fruit tastes amazing. You haven't been able to taste food like this in a long time. Your taste buds died a long time ago, so you have food, but it takes a very strong taste, covered in hot sauce, covered in sriracha, or something like that. Uh, as you bite into this apple, though, it is like you have your taste buds back in a full account and things of that sort. Um, as you feel the sin of pride... Uh, just come at you strong, buddy. For a second, you look around at this group and you are just, you are better than everybody here. You are fully confident in your abilities. Like uh, the the pride envelops you and holds you close like a dear loved one. All right. Cool. Noah's going to... uh sidle up to father patrick if he's is he still standing in the area yeah he would have made his way over to the bar at some point to order the oldest irish whiskey they had but okay where he'd be yeah uh uh bob kind of sighs a little bit because you're not asking for a mixed drink uh you're asking for just something that he has to pour from a bottle uh but rolls his eyes and pours you over uh grabs a bottle from beneath the counter and 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 blows on it for a second uh um uh, and uh, blows the dust off of it and pours you from this um, green bottle uh, that looks that has no label on it. Uh, it's just kind of sort of kept under the counter, but um, it tastes like home as he pours you uh, pours you a little glass and slides it over. Uh, Martin, ha- perception check, Martin. All right. Kai Hollyhammer. Sixteen. Uh, Martin, you notice, bud, you're, you're, you finally have a beard coming in. It's weird that it's happening here at the bar, but you notice that you got a little, like, uh, you got a little scruff coming in the sides and the face and stuff like that. It's real nice. Hmm. Uh, I'll, like, try to look at yeah. it. Yeah, there's uh, 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 Bob goes, oh, allow me, uh, and reaches and pulls out a little, like, hand mirror and holds it up. Looks good is on you. This normal? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's the garden. The side effect. Is that, what's the side effect? You get older. Hey, well, I mean, uh, for some people, it's always a little bit different. Some people, you know, uh, f- uh, magic effects take 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 weird sort of, um, um, you know, ba- based on the individual. So. Is this weird? Yeah, it's super weird. Uh, keep drinking though. Like maybe it'll go away. 
is that how that works? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty. If I'm like, wait. So if I drink more, it'll reverse effect. Or, that I mean, it couldn't hurt though, right? I'm. Well, I'm. Is it just a beer tonic? Is that what you gave me? Cause no. Is that what you did? No, come on. I would have told you if I did that. Would you? Yeah, totally. Oh, it's, it, is, it is a beer tonic? No, no, no. I would have told you. Uh, and he oh. goes over and he starts making drinks for other people as well. It, it, who's sitting? So Becca's close? Uh, Becca's, on her way over. Becca's walking over to yeah. where you are, Martin. And it kind of pull, saddles up next to you. weird to you, Becca? It's a little weird to me. Ugh, I wish I had a beard. Well, here, try this drink. Sure. Yeah. Becca? Why not? You have a sip of the drink, and Bob goes, Ooh, okay. Um, uh, and uh, after a, a few seconds, Becca, you start to get a five o'clock shadow. See? <laughs> you uh, lied to me. It is. It's a beer tonic, isn't it? I mean, it can. I mean, this is really great, but gosh, now I'm kind of wishing I didn't have one. Look at all of them. No beards on their face. Give, offer him a drink. Give him some of the drink. Uh, oh, give it XO. Give some to XO. Uh, Get some XO. Bob goes over towards uh, the bar and under the letter, uh, there's a whole bunch of letters there, but under the letter E, he makes a little uh, dash. He does a little dash, a little chalk mark dash on the chalkboard uh, back behind the Are bar. Are there other marks already there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a bunch of marks. Uh, P, G, L, E, G, W, and S. What's the E stand for, Bob? Envy. I'm not envious. No, you're right, bud. You're too smart for me. Uh, and he goes over and starts cleaning uh, cleaning glasses again. So, how Father many, Patrick, how many marks are you are doing? Eat? Okay. I'm all right. What makes you ask? Well, because I did that thing that kind of when I saw you before. I. It's not doing that thing oh, I, I can look at you here. why not what, are you okay he kind of looks over to Medusa and goes I am quite fine she and this place sort of have a, a way of setting people free if you will So, you've been set free? For the time being. You were, you were, so that what was going on wasn't a good thing before. Uh, Medusa turns uh, in her stool and just stares pointedly at you. <laughs> Noah, from the mouth of babes, what an excellent question. So that thing that you had before, was that good for you? Not always. Generally, no. But without it, I'm pretty sure I'd quite literally die. So, not good, but vital. Is that a word? Is that the right word I'm looking for? It is. That is the right word. So, you and Medusa got this thing going. A Medusa scoots her chair forward. So she's closer to Patrick. <laughs> Do we? Do we have a thing going? I'd like am to I, think so. Am I saying too much here? No, you're fine. Because I kind of have a thing going with Medusa too, but I don't think it's the same thing. Um, Medusa I, looks <laughs> over at you, Noah, and says, that is true, isn't it? Listen, I don't, and he's turning to Medusa right now and he goes, 
I have to take him back to get my dad. You do? All right. But what if I could get him back here after I take him back there? Uh, She stops and she takes a big swig of her drink and she goes, Noah, you owe me a favor. You are bound to deliver this favor, as are you, Becca. Noah, the boon that you have granted me is I want you to make sure that Father Patrick sees this through. I want it to be done. He will not run away from his responsibilities, not again. I want you to ensure that that man goes into that cell and that door closes. Do you understand, Noah? Yeah, the words you say, yes. Uh, As you say yes, uh, the card in your pocket begins to heat up and it leaves this small burn, uh, Noah. Like you feel it on your skin. It burns through whatever clothing you're wearing and leaves a small imprint of the card on your skin. Um, and it, 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 it just leaves, a, it's not enough to leave like a permanent scar, but there is definitely raised flesh where that card superheats for a moment and, and heats up. And then uh, she nods to you. She looks back at you, Patrick, and says, you are going to finish something that you started. There are plenty of other things that I wish you'd finish, but let's start with this one. All right. If that's what you'd like. What I like has never been in consideration with you. Uh, She takes a shot and like pounds the shot. And she goes, tell me more about this group. Uh, Zach, my dear, I've heard your name bandied about in some of the back corners of the new Underdark. What is it you do? I do what I need to do. And I'm the best at it. That is fair. You're a bounty hunter? In a sense. Who is it that you are working for? Uh, In the short run, myself. I'm the only thing that matters. What about the long run? I mean, I guess you could say I've got a a deal with Odin. Uh, Uh, Her her eyebrow raises and she goes, Odin, are you one of his ravens? And I'm going to pull the necklace and not say a word, but just show it. Uh, she nods her head. Well, it's not very its not very long since we've had uh, one of Odin's ravens in here. Well, that's, that's amazing. And of you, Exo, dear, how's your apple teeny? How's my apple teeny? It's good. It's delicious. Bob keeps looking over at you and just studying to see if anything uh, about your demeanor has changed. It's good, but I feel like I'm being watched. Uh, She goes, Bob, leave it be. Uh, And he nods and just uh, takes a rag and begins to wipe at a piece of counter that's already been wiped three or four times, you know, that he's just been wiping sort of consistently. And he goes, who is it that you serve, dear? I see the power leaking off of you. Well, gosh, buy me dinner first. I mean, um, well... uh, a, 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 a person, a, 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 an entity, a, kind of difficult. How, are you good with technology? No. A collective consciousness that was created by humans, but kind of gained sentience after a turn of time, and it's just a whole thing. So kind of basically the internet? She gets a sour look on her face when you're like, yeah. created by humans. Uh, she <laughs> just looks like she ate something bad. Uh, or smelled something bad, and she's just like, oh, good, good for you. No, f- no, okay. thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, well, that sounds interesting as well. Uh, she kind of like studies around the group, and then her eyes lock on Becca, and she goes, Becca, tell me more about your life. Oh, what do you want to know? I mean, 
I know you're not a big fan of the internet, and I'm kind of on that, so... What is it you do on the internet? It's, like, so awesome. She's got, like, this show that she does, and she, like, looks... It's, like, this most amazing thing. She does, like, ghost hunting and and things, and we go into into these creepy places, and I actually almost got on one of her shows once. It was so amazing. You see the hat? That's... uh, You You are... Yeah, what he said. You are hunting ghosts. Yeah. Heck yeah, and she's really things. good at it too. It's like you, she catches them sometimes. It gets, it's just. Whoa. I, I, I don't understand. You have pierced the veil. You know for a fact that the spiritual world exists, but yet you hunt for things that you know exist. Well. Yes. You're playing a trick on humanity. Noah's getting that typical confused look on his face again that he always has. Mm. I am following my family's history and contacting paranormal entities because it's in my family. Uh, She begins to laugh. She goes, a shaman. You're a shaman. <laughs> you can call me that. <laughs> uh, she laughs for a good long time. Uh, she goes, uh, She goes. oh, I love shamans. A uh, little bit of snake oil, some smoke. Father Patrick, do you remember? Uh, where we had that one fellow in here. What was his name? Uh, he convinced everyone that the, if the world was ending and that they should give away all of their earthly possessions uh, and things of that sort. That, that's what she does, but just on a... Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Okay, ghosts are real. Yeah, they're just not super cooperative, and they don't always show up when you need them to. So sometimes they just need a little help if you're going to have an audience, okay? How big is your audience? He's amazing. It's a lot. It's pretty big. It's like... Like in the tens of thousands. The tens of thousands? Uh Uh-huh. And you're able to reach all of them? Well, yeah. Perfect. Becca, I'm calling in my Uh favor that you owe me. Okay. Patrick waves for another shot. Yeah. Uh, Bob, (laughs) Bob, like, waves you off. He's like, he's like, I want to listen to this. uh, And just will immediately, like, slide the bottle across the table towards where you are. As he's like, shut up. Like, as he turns to, like, look over at this group. And he's like, go on, Medusa. What is the favor that she owes you? Uh, It's just sort of egging her on. Like, immediately pours a little bit more uh, alcohol in in her drink. Uh, It's this sparkling gold and drink they're sending up these little pops and whistles as it floats out of the glass uh medusa takes the drink and she looks at it and she goes you have a platform you're able to communicate to people this serves my interest (laughs) becca we're going to change your outreach my show is really popular. I don't really want to change it. I mean, it's done very well. That's too bad. The favor that I ask of you... Patrick starts chugging from the bottle. ...is to... <laughs> Becca, I want you to break the veil. Mm-hmm. Human- wait, wait, what do you mean, break? Humanity has lived far, far too long with this hidden veil placed upon it, uh, separating the world from the land of myth and magic you have an audience of the tens of thousands i would like you to start showing them the world as it exists a reverse shaman of sorts no more snake oil but the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth i mean i'm gonna level you see you that would be great that would be so much fun however Aren't I going to get, like, uh, coming down on me and just, like, taking me out of the picture? I mean, I'd last, like, four hours. The Agents of Sky? Yeah. Oh, probably very much so. Yeah, it's not going to work for you if they take me out in four hours. Even less. 
I mean, the second I throw up a video that's like, hey, <laughs> guess what you're missing? Like, I'm gone. I'm disappeared. I'm, I am out of here. And, and you don't get your favor because... You reach 10,000 people every time, though, correct? No, at least. Oh, yeah. her She has, like, she gets, like, 100,000 views on everything she does out there. She, it's just pretty amazing. She is hungry at this point. You start to hear little hisses behind her hat uh, as she goes, um, what do you propose then? Well, I just need some sort of protection. I need some way that they're not going to take me out immediately. All right. I mean, this sounds great. This sounds like a lot With of fun. With that all right... Zach pulls his crossbow and shoots the glass out of Medusa's hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Medusa turns to look and Bob just goes, oh. Uh, Susie next to her takes the shotgun out, uh, cocks it one-handed, and then just puts it on the bar uh, and keeps drinking as Medusa turns her head and looks over. You know we can't let you do that. <laughs> Why not? Against the Accords. You know that as a raven, I'm bound to not let that happen. Uh, the, ro the rooftop bar gets very, very, very quiet. Uh... As Bob just continues to wipe the spot on the bar, but the rag <laughs> has fallen down, and Susie is continuing to drink with the shotgun just cocked and loaded and next to her as she's staring straight ahead, the muscles in her arm tensed. Um, well then, Raven, wherein? A bit of a sticky situation. I know what I want. I don't expect anything too blatant from our dear Becca. But the fact remains, she owes me a boon. I have chosen my boon. Thus the negotiations can begin. I do not wish to break the dam. That would mean apocalypse, Armageddon, chaos in the streets. All I am asking our dear Becca to do is to poke holes in the dam. Small trickles of information for our tens of thousands of individuals and let them come to their own conclusions. I don't see this as a way of breaking the accords. Besides, if the accords break, then there's nothing getting her in trouble anyway, is there? by the act of poking holes making cracks or weakening the levee just like what happened with Katrina then appease me boy do not negate my solution and not provide one of your own making or you will decorate my garden beautifully dead or undead and you will understand what it is to have birds on your shoulder permanently Becca has a very unique platform in her audience. Maybe if we understood the motivation underneath the trickle, we could m find something that Becca could do without jeopardizing her audience, the accords, our lives, you know, small things. Medusa's still looking at Zach, but nods as you speak up, Exo. Uh, goes, fine. You want, you want an understanding of what I want more fully? It might help, absolutely, yes. Becca. I do, yeah. not, I do not wish you to break the dam. I do not wish you to bring the veil down. Instead... Instead, I would like you to lift up the city. 
instead of reaching out to the normal individuals of the world, I would like you to send a message to those that have broken the veil. Inconspicuous as you can, those that have broken the veil will know exactly what you're saying, but I want you to send out a message on each of your broadcasts to be a bastion, a figurehead, if you would, and let them know one thing and one thing only. New Orleans is open for business, particularly Medusa's. The House of the Rising Sun will take all comers, those that have hidden the shadows for far too long, those that have never seen the light of day for hundreds of years, the gods of old and new. I want them to know that this is the place to be. It does not break the accords. You are all within the letter of the law, and Becca becomes the figurehead for a movement, a movement of peace. So you want some publicity? Sure, publicity. Great, you're good with cameras in here, right? Absolutely, I am. Upstairs, this garden? Or do I need to just keep it to downstairs? Oh, no. The garden is fine. I will give you full run of the club. Perfect. Consider the House of the Rising Sun the official sponsor of your little show. But do get the word out. You Ev got some merch I could wear? I will make you merch that you can wear. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, she goes and looks over at Zach and gives a small nod. And she goes, Father Patrick, a gift. Thank you. Jude is going to hate this. Uh, she uh, reaches over towards the bar as the pieces of glass uh, all begin to reform in front of her. Uh, the liquid picking up from different spots along the bar uh, as time begins to reset a little bit. Uh, and the glass reappears in her hand. She catches the crossbow bolt in mid-flight as it reverses out from the glass. Uh, and she takes it and gently hands it to you, point facing her, Zach. Uh, Zach takes it and stows it. Shots! He's, uh, the look on his face is just absolute fury, but he can't do anything about it in this situation. <laughs> um, and so he, he, he shakes his head no and then leaves. Yeah. Uh, you walk away from the bar. He leaves the House of the Rising Sun entirely. Yep. Uh, Zach, uh, Zach walks out. Is anybody going with? Nope. And I need to save for some merch. <laughs> Medusa gathers shots. Uh, and and uh, Bob looks over at you, uh, XO, and just mouths the word, wow. Uh, and begins to pour alcohol, uh, pour shots of that same glittering gold uh, amber liquid uh, and passes them out to everyone uh, at the bar, uh, including Susie, who takes the shotgun and puts it back in the holster on her back. Uh, she takes the shot as well. Um, uh, uh, to new friends and to new change. Here, cheers. Uh Oh, Dice Barbarian, thank you for gifting all those subs, buddy. We Aww. love you and miss you. Here's here's the team bear hug. Uh, uh, everybody takes their shot. I need con saves from the party, please. Con saves. <laughs> We're looking for a con save of 15 or 16. Oh, uh, because I, uh, I wasn't going to be drinking the shot. I was going to do that like old trick. Oh, <laughs> ah. uh, Sleight of hand, please. Sleight of hand, Martin. Yeah, I don't think I'm very good at that. 16 for Noah. Uh, sleight of hand, 16. I'll roll a perception check for that. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Martin, you go, uh, boom. Uh, the drink goes behind your back. No one seems to notice or anything. Uh, as it does, it begins to eat away a small portion of the garden as the liquid hits the, the green grass. Uh, uh, Noah, you were the only one that doesn't immediately become just a little drunk, buddy. Uh, you're, you're managing to hold your liquor pretty well. Uh, everybody else who failed that check, Father Patrick, Exo, Becca, you are pleasantly buzzed at this point. Uh, and feel free to RP your characters accordingly. Becca, do you think she'll give us the rights to the song, the the, the Sunrise thing? So you can use it in your podcast or your Twitch? Wait, no. YouTube? YouTube. Yes, right. Um, okay. So, I don't know if she owns it, but I bet she has the mints. That'd be great. I she think it's mittens? a good idea. Why I bet if mittens? nothing else. Ooh, I should ask if she has the money to back it. But, like, I bet. Okay, hold up. She's hold up. What if, if we don't have it, we get somebody to do some, a song? You know how people make songs that are, like, kind of like the song, but not quite like the song? So, you can, like, skirt under copyright? We could totally get away with that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Parrot songs. Yeah, Parodies. that's what they're Parodies. called. I knew that's what they're called. That's right. Why did it burn the floor? <laughs> it's incredibly strong. <laughs> I didn't think it was that strong, but it was pretty good. Uh, well, no offense, no, but look, you're 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 basically a giant. No. Uh, as you all, no is, preens, just a little bit. That's you, racist, <laughs> Father Patrick. As you all you are can't having, just ask people why they're giant. Oh my I gosh! Him, I said he was. You can't just I'm ask someone. Incredibly <laughs> old. Leave me alone. I'm from a different time. <laughs> uh, Martin, uh, Bob, kind of uh, sides up to you, and he goes, um, "He goes, all right. You keep looking around the place. What are you interested in? Uh, you know, kind of what we were talking about before, the house." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the House of the Rising Sun. What do you want to know? Everything. All of it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's alive. I know it. It yeah, is. She's old. Um, she's real old. Uh, no one knows quite a bit about her. Uh, the only one who does is Medusa, and Medusa doesn't seem to be talking. Um, but the house kind of picks people. Picks people that she likes. Picks people that uh, kind of have... Uh, well, that are touched by fate. You know, they either have a rough road ahead of them or they're meant for great things and things of that sort. So, um, I don't what? know. Yeah, go ahead, Becca. Could I, I hear about? this? Yeah, absolutely. Could I walk up to him and go, doesn't it suck that you, like, heard about this place and looked for it for, like, forever and it's going to be, like, super public, like, tomorrow and everybody's going to know about it? Becca... I mean, no. I mean, it's interesting. Like, I'm glad. So, like, I knew about it, not but not all about it. I knew some. It, like, I like. Yeah, everybody's gonna know everything about it tomorrow. It's like an iceberg. So, I mean, how many layers are we gonna find out now that you're looking into it? Like, what else are we gonna find out? Are you gonna oh, find out on the first time, or are we just gonna be years looking into this thing? This could be uh, huge. You want to know the rumor that I heard about it? Is what? this Medusa speaking? Yeah, who's talking? No, this is Bob. Bob, he goes, okay. you want to know the rumor I heard about it? The rumor I heard is this guy shows up long, 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 long time ago, um, before civilization was actually any real thing. And he plants this seed, right, on this plane of existence. This seed grows this massive tree, right? And the tree is connected in some way to the fae. You know, and this tree becomes the central point. Well, then in other realms and things of that sort, there's this healthy fear of the Fae. They're established. But what happened here? The realm of man takes over. And sure enough, man do did what man does, which was use any viable materials that they had. So they took this tree and they chopped it down. And they used it to build this building. The structure, the foundations. The only problem is it didn't take the life out of the girl. There's still something there. Something that moves and breathes and rumor has it that's looking to get as much revenge on man as Medusa is. This connection to the Fey Wilds. 
So what if the two of them struck up a deal, and that was the first deal that sealed the house of the rising sun? As soon as I hear that, I'm going to go over to the wall and put both hands on it and try to press some healing into the wall. <laughs> uh, your healing magic... That's all I know. I mean, other yeah. <laughs> You're healing. I can't heal emotional damage. No, <laughs> emotional <laughs> damage. Uh, like you, you press your. <laughs> the house heals for ten emotional damage. Uh, yeah, you you press your healing magics into the wall. The the healing magic is absorbed uh, as if the house was a living being, and there is a there is a warmth that is sort of reciprocated back to you. Um. Uh. And more so than that is you feel your connection to the divine reach out through your hands. Um, almost as if it is not just M Martin that's establishing a connection, but Avalon is also reaching out as well. Uh, and there is a there's not a similarity, there's a connection and there's a relationship here that has been established before and it's it, it it's got the spiritual equivalent of two old friends seeing each other after a long time apart uh as as you reach out and that's the that's that flushes over me okay and i understand that's how i understand it. i i'm gonna grant you the insight into this because of your okay. connection to the hey trinket right. what's up uh <laughs> as you uh, <laughs> uh as as you reach out to the house and things of that sort all right, cool. I'll say I'm sorry. Uh, the house responds. Uh, that same warmth. Uh, you're not really getting connection or communication, but uh, okay. but the house responds. All right. From the bar, Exo's going to yell, don't lick the wall. <laughs> Who's licking walls? The wall gives you a little wink. No, that's not true. <laughs> 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 I, it's, it's Bob, what's what's going on here? It's, what's going on is not uh, what I felt. I'm not sure. I don't have a strongest connection with her as you do. So what do you really know? Uh, Patrick oh. snorts. <laughs> uh, he looks over at Father Patrick and blows him a kiss, uh, and then looks over at you, Martin, and he says, "The things I know that you don't know, Martin, could fill volumes." Well, I've got time. Do you? I want to know. If I don't know if we have time, guys. Zach's already gone. We got, That's we got right. to make some plans. We uh, got some things we got to figure out. Bob leans back and he says, so how are you all getting to the moon? So Beck and I talked to Mr. Why Fancy Pants. And uh, he, I think he, he's got this race going on. And, and I've been thinking about this. I think we can do the race, you guys. I think we might even be able to win, win the race. And the last leg of the race gets us to the moon. I think we can do it. Okay. So, but here's the thing. Okay. So we would have to enter a race. And then I'm trying to remember. It got really complicated. We would have to enter the race. And then you have to get through all the rounds of the race. And if you get through every single round of the race, then you get in the last leg, which gets you to the moon. And uh -huh. only if you win... Do you not lose something big? What was it? It was like your soul or a part of your childhood or a significant ma It was something pretty big. So like, let's say, and let's say 10 people enter the race. You got like one in 10 chance at like not losing like part no. of your soul or something. I, but like, I have a no a chance of doing race, it. But like, we don't even know how many people are running the race. So Listen, like, there's a good chance that this football, would be a really terrible deal. Races are easy. Yeah, like, do you win every single game, Noah? Yeah, I do. Don't you? Uh, Noah, no, give me a deception check as somebody that has rooted for the New Orleans Saints for many years of their life. Well, the coach probably tells him he's winning every game. <laughs> yeah, but I think Noah would have an understanding of, like, even though Noah may have won yeah. the game, the Saints... It's Montana who tells him that. Yeah. That's a 20 Not 20. 20. Not 20. You know what? The Saints win every game that Noah plays. Uh, and he says it with said such conviction. Has watched. Yep. He, he said a lot of games, I guess. 
for not 20. I don't know. Of I'm course. Just you what I learned. <laughs> like, see, with I all that, like and that's, that does, but, but there's a there's a chance we can win. I mean, what other options do we have? It's not like we have all these options out there. Okay, do we have any other options? I yes. We spoke with the follower of Trovic, who wants to build a machine. I don't think that one's going to cost us anything other than just stand a protection detail for it. I mean, yeah, I want to program for it, but... Oh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think we need to do both of them. To, we just need one <laughs> way to get to the, the, the moon. I mean, but do all of us have to get to the moon? I mean, I, really, I, you, just, you need to get to the moon. That's true. I but I mean, so I'd like to go to the moon. I could get some great footage on the moon. So, I mean, if we spread moon out our haunted. chances, maybe we could do all the things and get chances? I, I feel like if we're starting to split up, our, our chances of winning either one are going to be lower than if we just decided to all go. Are and they both on the same the day? Same. We could do them both on different days. I think they are we, both No, we got to get to the moon by Friday. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what day it is, but it's soon, and I've got a game right after too. So I've got to be able to get back. So, so when is the when is the race, and when is the um... the race starts tomorrow? Okay, so the race is tomorrow. When's the other thing start? That's also the Inventors tomorrow. Expo. That's the they're, one. They're both tomorrow. Correct. Why would anybody schedule two things like that on the same day? I mean, you're asking me. Ludicrous. No, I, I, I don't think he's making money. He has an assistant for that, I'm pretty sure. Probably. <laughs> Does this beard look weird to you guys? Yes, it's so patchy. I, I just want to get you a straight razor. I can, I can. Do you want me to fix the beard, Martin? Bob, like, pipe, pipes up. He's like, you want me to fix the beard? Listen, I don't know. I've never had one in this. No, no, no. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, he uh, takes a, a a red bottle and uh, pours it in a shot glass and passes it over to you. There you go. Take a drink. Beard will fall right off. But oh, can I have one of those the too? Only thing gonna fall <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, uh, Becca's got a pretty nice looking beard as well. Uh, as uh... You go first. You were second, so I don't want to deprive you of being first this time. Perfect. Uh, oh, he pu thanks. he pours some in a shot glass and slides it over to you, Becca. Thank you. I was getting jealous of everybody else's not beer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. Uh, we. It's time to use the the wild magic surge oh! that was given to me earlier in tonight's show. I am a lucky, lucky fella. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, what are what are the odds? Uh, this wild magic effect is going to end as the second wild magic effect takes hold. As we use uh, indigo chameleon, you can use this, or if you have your pill bottle uh, close oh, by. Oh, I don't have it with me. That's okay. It's not uh, close. That's I'll okay. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, go ahead and roll me a d100 please as we use the the yeah. patented wheel of um, wild magic yeah rolled in the chat rolled in the chat Maybe. Well, you, do it you, wrong. You, 95 does that no. list have the things that we talked about uh, that does not. That's the pill bottle. Uh, uh, Indigo, yeah, and I don't in, with me. I need Indigo to Chameleon it. has a special uh, wild magic pill bottle with all the little pills that have little wild magic surges that everyone here has provided uh, and, and little little <laughs> things along those lines. Uh, what you doing, Dice Barbarian? Uh, but Dice Barbarian has two shots, so. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you, Wild. Uh, thank you, Wild Magic Effect from Dice Barbarian. Uh, Indigo Chameleon, you know that feeling when you're leaning back in a chair, but you lean back a little bit too far, and that feeling you get like you're gonna fall, but then you catch yourself at just the last second? You now feel like that. Been there a bunch of times. Uh, go ahead and roll me a D4, please. Also in the chat. There we go. You now feel two. like that for the next 10 minutes. You, uh, 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 Indigo Chameleon, it's just constantly like, whoa, uh, Becca, you're just, uh, I can't, whoa, like constantly feel like you're gonna, oh, God. Uh, so the, drunk plus that, this is great. Drunk plus so that, good. this and is, envious. and envious. Plus envious. Okay. If you it. can put this together, I, uh, how about this? 
Indigo Chameleon, if you can put this together convincingly for the till the end of the episode, I will grant a level up to the entire party. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> if anybody can do it, she can. She's a professional. Right. She can. Uh uh, there you go. Uh so uh Bob kind of looks over at Becca as the beard falls off and she's just kind of whoa, whoa. She goes, Hey, there you go. It was correct. Martin, can I make uh, you a drink? Bob, I feel like the relationship we have should be on the next level by now instead of the prank level. This is like noob stuff, and you're going to catch me every time because I am the biggest noob. How about I just this? just got lucky twice now. Okay, and... how about this? How about this? If you do a shot, I'll do a shot. I don't even have a beard that I have to worry about. You're making the drink, and then we're both going to drink it? Yeah. That sounds like buddy stuff. I'll do it. Okay. He pours it in a shot glass, uh, and he he, uh, he pours two, and he goes, uh, pick which one you want. Well, I clearly can't choose the drink in front of me. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have to leave. <laughs> uh, so I'll just take the one in front of me. Okay. I he goes, on the count of three, ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. Do you drink it? Yeah, this is terrible. Uh, he throws it over his shoulder, just like you did with the other shot before, uh, and throws the drink. Give me a D100, Martin. Yay. A 33. 33. Oh, no. Um, I quit. I quit. Dang it. I'm the worst. <laughs> oh, no. Um, Martin. What the hell do I end up in? Martin. Uh, oh, bud. I need you to roll a d4 for me. Oh, Lord. Well, this is, this is not 3d6. Four. Ever. Martin. Oh, bud. Oh, bud. Uh, Martin boom, uh, falls asleep. Uh, uh, just, just, boom, uh, head conks on the table. And when he does, he forgets the past four hours of his life. Oh, he, no. he never, he never walked into the bar that he's wanted to walk into <laughs> his whole life. He does not he remember to have that connection with the house. The house <laughs> remembers the connection that, that, that it had with Martin and Martin still has the card, but Martin just goes, boom. Um, and 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 falls asleep, head on the table, uh, and and forgets the past, oh, no. the past oh, no. four hours of, of of that has transpired here. Most in the most awesome night of his life is now. Uh, Martin, I'll say this, buddy. Gone. You've been here for a good amount of time. I'll say that you remember being like, "This is it." We've uh, you make the connection with the house. You walk in the front door, and nothing past that. Like you, you take two steps into the space. Like you take two steps into the space, and he's just, he just, he's out. He's out. He's out. Oh, exactly what happens. I'm so I sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, best night Martin's ever. Version of the Hangover. I'll tell. You- yeah, hundred percent. Uh, this is this is rough, buddy. Uh, I'll tell you what. If anybody, if, no, 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 no. If anybody no, wants to no, buy no, you no, a re-roll, no, I will no, let you re-roll no, this. No, no, please don't anybody buy a re-roll. It is the it's the perfect thing that should happen. Okay, great, uh, Martin. You are pass out, uh, and you guys can wake up Martin at any time that you would like, uh, or just let him sleep, and then he will just have forgotten the past four hours that have happened. All I'm going to say is my my gif has new meaning as far as the one that I threw into the chat. <laughs> Literally, he's laughing and then boom, falls over. <laughs> cool. 
Uh, oh. but, but no more beard, so you won't remember anything about the beard <laughs> anyway. So. <laughs> Perfect. It was never weird. Well, okay, so we're almost down half the party now, guys. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so, Are you okay, Becca? Uh, yeah, I just felt like I was going to fall over. Um, so should, should you I maybe sit like down? But they got to talk to the guy who has this town, the, the science town. And I really wanted to talk to that guy. I talked to him. What do you want to know? I, I just wanted to talk to him like you did. Oh, he's downstairs. Because that sounded like a cooler place to go. I think he's downstairs. Our place is just like other things, but your place sounded way cooler. Are you <gasps> kidding? You don't know what I put together <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> I feel like my childhood wasn't that bad. I, I I don't want to risk losing it. I'm sorry if yours was that bad. I you know if it was. You guys are talking about losing. I can't lose. I don't believe that's how that works, unfortunately. But if it, your childhood was that bad, I suspect your father had a hand in it. We could just leave him up there. My childhood was so what? normal and boring. Mine was God. amazing. But oh, it was just. Then why are you willing to risk that? There's no risk. I think we could do it, guys. I'm not so you sure. You think you're going to go on a gnome rocket? I've heard about these gnomes. Yeah. I've never met. What I've never hear? met a gnome in a rocket. Actually, I have no idea. It just. I was playing WoW the other day. And gnome things always explode. They really do. Is that some sort of okay? It yeah. It's Is it like board game? Yeah, kinda. Alright. I don't know. But different yeah. No, it's better this way. So you're basing you your Wanting to play with your imagination and risk everybody's childhood, including the one that will help you remember the person we're going to save. <clears throat> right? Am I understanding this correctly? So you're willing no to risk, risk your memory of your father. Way? You're you're willing to risk your father, the memory of him. Right? I remember that memories were the thing. We we're just giving up a little part of our childhood. Oh. I'll just give up the bad parts. Oh, you get I mean, to there choose? there weren't really any bad parts. Oh, you get to pick. Well, that's different. Maybe. Oh, you didn't get any information other than the fun part. Cool. What no, more information cool. did we need? I don't know. Terms and services agreement? The fine print? The stuff you read before you click, yes, I accept these terms before you install the software? What do you, you Nobody don't read the ever terms? reads those. Uh, I've never read them. For Who what it's worth. that? I'm not really sure what they are, so. It's like we need a fey lawyer. Whoever said it in chat earlier, thank you. Well, I know how we can get there. This sciencey stuff is sounding like it's a pipe dream to me. Bob goes, why don't you put it to a vote? Democracy at play. And then uh, the losers just kind of know that the, that's where the group is headed. And uh, you can start planning ahead. <clears throat> All right. I like votes. <laughs> um, uh, so <laughs> let's vote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna say ahead of time, I'm gonna vote for the sciencey guys because I wish I gotten to meet them, and I'm super, super jealous right now. <laughs> I'm also gonna vote for them. Yeah, I'm gonna fire off a text to uh, Zach. Okay. Zach, let's go back to where you are, pal. Uh, as Exo <laughs> sends a text, what text are you sending? Science or imagination? <laughs> okay. Zach, where oh, are and you? A gift, and a gift of, like, sparkles. 
Oh, he has a Nokia. He can't get gifts. It'll he, just be ones and zeros. It'll just be fine. ones and zeros. It'll just be a hyperlink that he can't access. Uh, Zach, uh, where are you headed, pal? Are you headed back home? He's headed to the Underdark, but he needs to blow off some steam. Um, he was going to go and try and pick a fight anywhere because you know he can beat anybody right now. <laughs> Absolutely you can. Uh, <laughs> you are the best at what you do. Uh, you do get a text from Exo as you have walked into a bar uh, and uh, walked up to the biggest guy in the space and just kind of like, you know, uh, uh, tapped him on the shoulder. You see this big like uh, orcish looking dude sort of turn around and look at you as the text notification goes off on your phone. Uh, the text can wait. We're, we're doing <laughs> oh, this. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'll say this. Uh, we'll make it a real quick fight. Uh, I'll do I'll do rolls. Uh, we'll do... We'll do... Uh, you're a deck space character, right? Uh, so I'll say this. Uh, I'll roll a strength-based check, and I'll let you roll a deck space check. So roll a d20 and give me your decks... Uh, what is your dex plus? Is it a plus five? Plus four. Plus four. Uh, I will do the same plus four, but strength based in the chat. And this will determine who wins this fight. Okay. Winner take all. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me that roll in three, two, one. Crap. You get Seven. beat. You get beat so soundly, Zach, uh, that, uh, that 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 as you <laughs> tap this dude, this dude kind of turns around, and as he does, his two brothers uh, also turn around. As you're like, "What? What? Do something! Do uh, you know? It is a it is a bar brawl. You 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 pepper these guys with shots and things of that sort, but they make sound work of you, uh, raging through whatever sort of pain that you are able to dish out and things of that sort. Um, you put up a valiant fight, buddy, but but at the end of it, you're just kind of beaten and bloody. You're down to like two hit points, thrown out of the bar poof, as the effects of the apple start to wear off. Uh, and you're just kind of like sitting up alongside the bar, patching up your wounds with duct tape and, uh, and, um, super glue as you, as you pull out your phone and look down upon him. Um, he's just going to text back. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he wants imagination. So, oh, dang, it's still, it's two, still against three. two against three. Uh, you, you all, uh, you all resoundingly vote uh, for for the the invention expo, <clears throat> the inventors expo, uh, with uh, Zach um, looking a little worse for wear uh, uh, and and just sort of crawling away to to get a rest. Uh, the rest of you uh, have a choice to make. You're welcome to rest here at the bar. Uh, the rooftop garden is very comfortable. Everybody's a little drunk. Um, you you can also Uber back to respective places to stay and, and remember that there is strength in numbers. What I need to know is who here is getting shmammered drunk. Uh, uh, if we are getting to the point where I need to roll on a carousing table or you need to roll on a carousing table to see where your drunk butt ends up within the city of New Orleans uh, uh, the next day because it may not be here. He kept looking at Exo for some kind of reaction. Yeah. Did something ever happen? No. Uh, you realize yeah. that now he had just made you an apple teeny, an apple teeny, and he was just kind of messing with you. You know, the, the entire time. He held time. the teeny. Thanks, buddy. He, he held the teeny uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, but as you, as you kind of catch on to it, I think there's a little bit of insight on his part. He's like, I'm not going to mess with you. Come on. <clears throat> And not good enough to mess? Never mind. I, uh, he yeah. immediately takes the glass and pours some booze into it. Uh, it. Uh, 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 slides it over towards you, and he goes, drink. On me. I'm not supposed to pour it on you. I, I realize that, but that was my first thought. But thank you for the drink. Yeah. Uh, D100, please. <laughs> D100. <laughs> Noah's yep, also yep, 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 so yep. disappointed in losing his imagination because he thought he had such an amazing idea that uh, he's probably going to be sulking in the cups tonight. Sulking in the cups. Picking Martin up. You're, you're uh, getting drunk. Martin up off the ground and putting him in a chair next to him. Maybe not waking him up, but he's going to put him in the chair next to him and drink with Martin there at the table. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, 
end of the line, uh, the end of the line drink is served towards you. Kind of tastes like a, a Long Island iced tea, uh, but uh, the the cup is is served to you with a coin underneath it, acting as a coaster. The coin is rather large, uh, and he uh, he looks over at you and he uh, he takes the coin out as he slides the drink over and hands you the drink, and he goes, uh, "Here's the fun part. You flip the coin." Heads, you're going to sober up completely. You'll have all your faculties to you. Tails, you are going to be the drunkest you have ever been in your entire life. Um, you've bought the drink, so the magic's there. It's either you flipping the coin or me flipping the coin. It's up to you. Uh, um, is that for me? That's for XO. I'll go ahead. Oh, that's XO. XO's absolutely terrified. Um... But she'll flip herself. Uh, roll, the, roll me a yeah. d20. Even is heads. You sober up completely. Odd is you. You are the drunkest you have ever been in your entire life. You are you are Smirnoff ice blasted, uh, drunk. You are homecoming you are like junior year homecoming all over again? junior year all over again. It's a joke. Kids don't drink unless you're twenty one. You well, even then get hammered xo as you flip the coin the coin flips through the air and you are just you are drunk 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 uh your phone is filled up as al anticipates this coming and there is just uh there is just gif after gif of shot 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 like uh everybody like uh, like Mm. xo is gone uh that night as as you you take a trip you take a is trip. Is there music on the roof? Uh, I think for you there is. Uh, <laughs> like... It's only like every fourth and fifth word of songs that she remembers from a million years ago. So it's like party rock. And then that's it for a good 40 <laughs> seconds. And then another four words. I think you're hearing these songs and you're just singing like party rock. Party <laughs> rock. It's just mouth noises. It's just mouth noises uh, the entire time. <laughs> Noah, uh, D one hundred, please. As you are, you are, you are sinking into the cups tonight. As everybody preps for the uh, Invention Expo tomorrow morning. Uh, we need to know: Did Martin wake up as I was uh, throwing him on the chair next to me? Uh, did you purposely do that to wake him up? It, all it takes is no, intent. I, I wasn't trying to wake him up. No, then he did not wake up. Necessarily, I was just putting him on the chair next to me. Somebody so has to purposely up. wake up Martin. So D100? D100. You sink into the cups as you get the next drink made for you. That's going to be a 27. 27. Uh, Bob pours together a (laughs) weird-looking concoction in it. Um, uh, (laughs) You, uh... Noah, uh, you have the what was I saying? Uh, it kind of tastes like ginger ale uh, with a splash of vodka in it and stuff like that. Uh, but the thing, instead of like, if somebody asked for extra cherries, this thing is chock a block with cherries. This is like ten or eleven cherries have been have been put into this glass with this like ginger ale looking concoction. Noah, you spend the rest of the night um, a drinking what was I sayings and. You have conversations with people and get about four sentences in every time and then completely forget what you were saying. Uh, And say the words, what was I saying? And then start a completely new conversation. Get about four sentences in and then immediately lose your train of thought. The entire night. My mom, she gave me this for like, she was tired of me with uh, the comic books and everything. So she tried me out on this um on on these lego things and as i was building this it was coming and (laughs) what was i saying (laughs) i'm sorry this is my nightmare when you are the only sober person at a party and everyone's having that that drink this is my nightmare this this is this is the greatest fear of my life uh yeah dad said to scoop out the horse stalls and everything (laughs) and so i went out there and I just started moving like the horses and the cows, and and I got the shovel and, and got. What was I saying? <laughs> uh, Becca, what are you doing? 
Uh, Axel okay. and Noah have so, decided to stay here tonight um, involuntarily, and Martin has as well. So Becca, who wasn't initially planning to drink anything, she was planning to have, like, caffeine and sugar together, um, but then had that one shot. Now, not only is incredibly drunk, but also feels like she's going to fall over at any given moment, which I imagine is just coming across as her feeling even more drunk. She's also jealous of every drink she sees, and she wants to try all the drinks. Oh, no. Because now she's just jealous of every single person drinking anything that she sees. Okay. So I imagine. Yep. Uh, so Martin's like sleeping through this whole thing. <laughs> and do we, should we try to wake him up? And because we've got to do like the, what was I saying? I wish I could take a nap <laughs> right now. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> oh. Father Patrick. Father Patrick, Becca is polishing off all of the empties at the bar. Uh, Noah is lost in his own thoughts. Zach is beaten in an alleyway, uh, uh, going full Captain America. I can do this all day. Martin's asleep. What are you doing with your evening? I'm probably just going to find a place to sleep quietly with my bottle. <laughs> you grab your... all his recent life choices. <laughs> you grab Coming your. Coming this fall by Panic at the Disco. <laughs> you grab your bottle, and as you start to move away, your joints are aching. Uh, Exo, Becca, Noah, give me perception checks at disadvantage, please. All right. Noah sees nothing. Oh. (laughs) Becca with the 13. (laughs) And Exo doesn't notice anything. Becca, I'll start. I'll say that as Father Patrick moves off to a corner, he's looking tired. Um, uh, His hair actually looks a little gray. As opposed to the black hair that he normally had, or red hair, or um, uh, uh, Father Patrick, what color is your hair? Red. Red. Uh, the red hair is starting to fade a bit, uh, with wisp of gray and white, uh, uh, sort of finding their way in and around it uh, and through it. But it's not anything to be totally concerned about with your with your thirteen. You're still having your own issues to deal with, but it's something you notice as you move off to the side. Go ahead, head over there if he's looking like he doesn't, like if he wants to be alone, that's fine. But like if he's not looking like he's wanting to be alone, I would head over there. Sure. <clears throat> I don't think he's really okay. got whether or not he wants to be bothered on his mind so much as just like, I am not involving myself in all of this. I'm going to sleep. You look sleepy. I wish I could sleep. Oh, I suspect after enough drinks, you probably can. Just kind of like offer the bottle a little bit. Sure, she'll take a swig. Why not? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you get a little drunk <laughs> at this point? Like, yeah. I don't know. Tomorrow's going to be a terrible day. Um, uh, your hair looks different. Yep, that happens. When they disconnect after a little while. The disconnect. Is your dis- disconnect like you're drinking? So you're disconnected? No. Uh, there are certain places in the world where... Um, what, did, uh, what did Martin's father call it? Uh, my passenger can't reach me. Like the person living inside your brain. Correct. That's the one. Does that person have a name? He does. It's Michael. Michael. Father Patrick, go ahead and give me a death save, please. Oh, no. Uh, 
da, 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 da. Let's just con roll, right? Yeah. Twelve. Okay. Do I do I see any any um, not that I can help? Yep. The red is being replaced with uh, <clears throat> more and more white. Uh, the skin is starting to wrinkle a bit. Uh, he's starting to get these frown lines around his Ooh. eyes and things of that sort. Uh, as he is, he is aging rather quickly. Do we need to get you out of here? Like, or heal you or something? I can't heal you. I'm sorry. I wish I could heal people. Uh, whoa. Anyway. Um, do we need to find somebody or get you out? Do I know if I have enough time to make it through the night here? Uh, you know that, uh, that no amount of dying could... Like, you're the, you're the vessel. You're, 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 as you're having this thought, you, you make another death save. Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, that you have gone long periods of time uh, in places like this, but the minute you are removed, either of your own volition or not, um, Michael is going to to take what is his. You will not make it through the night, but you will rest to a degree. I just need to sleep. Okay, you look like a hundred years old. I mean, maybe not a hundred, but you look old, like. Like, ugh. so, like, is that going to fix itself? Or should we just get you out of here before you, like, dust? I won't turn to dust. But there are nights okay. I feel older than others. If you can't oh, wake me up. Oh, then it fixes later? Exactly. Sometimes you just need a good nap. You'll understand when you're older. Got it. Mm. All right. Because I can, we can get you out of here. No, it's fine. It's fine. Mm. If I, if you have trouble waking me up in the morning, just let Medusa know. She'll be happy to throw me out. Hmm. All right. So then I get a phone call, and it was like from the police, <laughs> and, and I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> And um, so, like, they said my mom was there, but I called my mom, and my mom wasn't there, but they said, so that's when I, and what was I saying? Uh, Father Patrick, after about 10 minutes over in that corner, uh, you close your eyes and pass away. Um, as your body just gets old and old and old, and Father Patrick dies essentially um father patrick it's not uncommon for you to pass and things of that mm. sort it's happened before what is uncommon is for you to end up in the offices of the foundation it's the same large circular room uh same guy behind the desk johnny's holding a glass and he looks <laughs> over at you and says, Father Patrick. Uh-huh. You must have passed on. Oh, it happens every now and then. You don't have your bodyguard with you. That's correct. Uh, he uh, finishes his drink and puts it down on the counter reaches underneath the counter and pulls out um, a sword and places it on the counter. He pulls out a robe with all these patches on it, places it on the counter. He pulls out this golden ring and he places it on the counter. And he takes uh, a <coughs> cup, not too unsimilar from the one you guys took, and places it on the desk. 
takes a large tome and places it on the desk goes through and throughout the course of a couple of minutes he's just taking items out from underneath the desk and placing them on the desk he finally finishes and it looks like he went to a yard sale and ransacked it tons of stuff on the desk he turns back to look at you. So are we just like starting a rummage sale or? There's always going to be cups. It's true. There's always going to be rings. There's always going to be daggers. There's going to be swords. There's robes. There's tomes. There's a million different things that groups like your group came in here wanting to make a deal to get. I've got them scattered to the winds, decks of cards, uh, little bags that people need, packs. I just wanted you to know one thing before you rested. Just how unspecial you are. Oh, I'm quite aware of that. Good. We're on the same page. I'm really, really looking forward to working with Martin. He's a good kid with a good head on his shoulders. I'm going to see you and Martin and the rest of the crew in about a month. I'm really looking forward to it. Good to know. Uh, I'll see you. My next appointment's here. Uh, there's a knock on the door, dunk, 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 uh, and an individual steps into the space. Uh, and as they do, you see the agents of Sky walking in uh, before the vision cuts, and you are back in the floating abyss of nothingness. Heroes, you can mark down a long rest on your sheet. Unless anybody has anything they are doing with the rest of their night, drunkenly stumbling, drunkenly falling, and things of that sort. You are all Noah, <laughs> Becca, Martin, Exo. Martin, you are not hungover. You wake up in a lovely, luscious garden roof bar, bud. Uh, uh, the sun is shining. Uh, uh, you see uh, an orange juice kind of slid across the bar towards you by this really handsome-looking, pale-skinned uh, individual by the name of uh, uh, Bob. Uh, he's wearing a name tag, and he goes... Hey there. Hey. When did I get here? And where is here? Uh, hey kiddo. Uh, I don't know how to put this. You're at the house of the rising sun. Wait, I remember outside. I came in? Yeah. (laughs) So we just got here? This is awesome. I got so many questions. Like, I've done a lot of research on this place. This place is awesome. And I'm pretty sure that this house is alive. But I don't know. I'm pretty sure 98% positive. I'll tell you what. I'm going to cancel my other plans. I'll answer any questions you have. What do you got? And that is where we are going to end tonight's episode. Uh, (laughs) As Martin takes Bob aside. Uh, Heroes, next week. We are going to Eureka. Uh, Eureka for the Inventors Expo. If you've watched the sci-fi show, you're going to notice some of the very similar characters from there as I'm stealing heavily from it uh, in terms of that. Uh, You are going to be working with Felrin Marin uh, during a BattleBots style episode. Uh, You will be able to assist in certain ways utilizing your magics and abilities that you have behind you to help Felrin in his fight against the BattleBots. There will be three rounds of combat. Um, uh, but you will be a support team as such, and you will also be involved in the designing of the battle bot next week, uh, which is going to be super cool. Uh, and I am, uh, I'm excited to do it. Uh, after that, you'll be headed to the moon, uh, but go ahead and, uh, you know what? Take that level up. Becca has earned it for all of you. Uh, did a couple of like, whoa, whoa, uh, uh, made it very good for me. Take that level up. You're at level six. Now you're going to need it. Uh, and things of that sort. Uh, if you're going to take anything interesting, if you're going to multi-class, just make sure you fill your good buddy Scribe in on it. Uh, and, and we love you. Dice Barbarian! Uh, we love you so much. It was so good to see you again, pal. Chef Death, as always. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited to see what sort of wild inventions the group comes up with uh, for next week's Eureka Love Fest. So we love you so much. Uh, uh, thank you for hanging out with us and breaking the veil with us. We're going to go raid another stream real quick. We're going to go raid My Lady Saito uh, and, and share a little bit of the TTRPG love. But hard hands out, kids. We'll see you next time. And you're clear.